All right, guys, I'm going to try and explain something to you guys because this is, like, ridiculous at this point. I just got these five engines from different people, and every freaking one of them did the same thing that brought me one of these this week. And it's like, I don't understand where the information comes from to make people think this is going to be some kind of great improvement. Okay, this is the result of mixing your gas incorrectly, okay? Do you see these pistons? Every one of them looks like this. They either expanded from the heat, and it ripped the lining off, and the bearings went, such as this one. This was a steel, or a Husqvarna one, actually. It was a really cool freaking engine. Husqvarna piston. Uh, he blew the freaking bearings out. And then here's a Minarelli. Same thing, expanded, you know, around the gas port. I mean, look at these poor things. They're all trucked up. <laughs> it's just pure carnage. Okay, so this is a result of mixing your gas wrong. And... <sighs> Okay, I'm going to just go over the kit ones to start with, okay? This was a motorized bicycle. I don't know what the hell. I think this was a steel sleeve here. No, this, yeah. This was a steel sleeve and this was a YD100, I think. Something like that. But anyways, motorized bicycle kits, okay? They make the ring gap with a certain type of oil in mind, okay? Now, the oil aids in compression and it aids in cooling. So the kit motors that you buy in the things, they are not solid aluminum. And I don't know how to stress this enough. They actually have zinc, aluminum, uh, magnesium, Oh, uh, and there was one more in there. I can't remember what the hell it was. It was a weird one. But they usually use it in the mix when they're pouring those engines, okay? And the reason that they leave the oil ratio up is to help cool that engine off. And they put the zinc in it purposely because you're using a chrome liner. And chrome liners can actually separate from aluminum if they heat up faster than the aluminum, okay? <clears throat> so they usually put a higher ratio in there. Now, with that said too, most of the motorized bicycle rods and the bearings are designed for 32 to one organic oil or 40 to one synthetic oil, okay? Now, they tell you to do 16 to 1 organic oil when you're breaking in a bike for the first one gallon of gas, which is usually two tanks of a motorized bicycle, okay? One of the standard kit tanks, okay? They're a half gallon. So, the first gallon, the reason is, is when these slide up and down the chrome liners that are in almost every freaking kit, even the steel ones, these ring shape, okay? And the heavy oil helps remove the particles as they file down nice and, it's very fine stuff. And it helps blow it out the exhaust, okay? And if a little piece gets in there, it lubricates it and keeps it passing through. And in that process with the organic oil, the rings will take form and then your bike will run a very long time on the correct oil gas ratios, okay? Now, the 32 to 1 is designed for organic oil to be run in these and the 40 to 1 is usually for a synthetic oil which basically covers about the same range as the 32 to 1, okay? And oil plays a huge role in compression in these engines. If you do not have enough oil, you're actually losing compression and being counterproductive. You're not lubricating it. The engine's going to run hot. 
So that's 99% of the reason why people are having overheating problems as well, okay? Now, this one here, actually pretty cool. This came out of a uh, Husqvarna build, which I've never seen before. It was really interesting, okay? Same thing, blew all the bearings, all that great shit. You could see the heat marks where it cold seized in it, you know? It's typical, a Minarelli one, same freaking deal, yeah. Now, okay, now here's the thing, is these two guys here, one's the Minarelli, one's the Husqvarna one, okay? Now, okay, granted, it's 50 to 1 when you're running those, in the saw or in the moped build that you're riding, okay? That's great. The problem is the moped never runs at 10,000 RPM nonstop because it has a freaking transmission. So that's how you get into those cold seas issues. After about 50 seconds, the piston starts heating up more than the actual cast iron, and then you get a cold seas. In the case of the saw, the guy ran 50 to 1 and do it with the original plug. And running it really hot and long like that, same thing. So you want to add usually 40 to 1, 32 to 1, even in those builds, just to cover all the ground. It is not going to impede the engine enough to be noticeable. I mean, what is it? Do you want an engine that runs or one that runs only a short while? You know, I, I don't know what the, how what else to say with it. So, anyways, I mean, this is the typical thing that I keep getting. But every single person ran 50 to 1. Every single person trucked up their freaking engine. And two, this one here was only a week old. And this Minarelli was only a week old. So... I'm out there rebuilding these. That's why I have not had time to do any videos and stuff lately. But I just wanted to show you, you know, I mean, the rule of thumb, do 16 to 1 on braking, 1 gallon. It doesn't matter the freaking build. Hey, I do it in the saw build. I did it in the Minarelli builds. I did it in the YD100. I did it in everything. And then if you're going to run organic, 32 to 1. If you're going to run synthetic, 40 to 1. Don't start getting into these stupid 50 to 1, 60 to 1 ratios thinking it's going to improve something because it is not. And you're going to end up in this pile of pistons. So right now, I got all the pistons in that. Let me see. The YD100 was 70 bucks. This one here was 60. The new Minarelli um, cylinder and piston. That was another 50 uh, this one here was, you know, what, 30 bucks online, I think, eBay, the ADCC. And then this steel sleeve one, uh, that was, jeez, I think 60 bucks for the new one. So right there, that's a lot of freaking money people killed just mixing the gas room. And mind you, I gotta put bearings in one, two, three of them, four of them. We got to do a new crank bearings and this one actually is going to need a whole new uh, crank bearing assembly, the entire thing in the case and everything because all the pieces went through the, just trucked everything up. So anyways, and this one was pretty impressive too because when the rod started destroying the uh, crank bearing, pin bearing, it actually jammed up in the side of the case and split the case. So, yeah, I got five engines I'm rebuilding for people right now. And that's what's been holding me up. I do got the saw builds going. I'm going to start selling those soon, by the way. We got a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, starting up a shop and stuff. I'm going in with two people. So, I hope that goes well. Uh, we'll be having more on that shortly. Right now, I'm fixing bikes, and I got two more of these damn things to go. I have not even looked at yet.
All right, peace.